Carl Summer, president of Reliable EDM, has a wealth of machining experience. Having worked as a machinist, tool and die maker, foreman, tool designer, and operations manager, Carl now shares with you from his wealth of experience. In the previous video, I showed you how we made the punch, and then we got to the die section where we cut it out in the bandsaw. Now in this video, we're going to show you a filing machine. Now you'll probably never see a machine like this again. Why won't you see a machine like this? Because of the technology that you see behind me. This is wire EDM. It has revolutionized tool and die making. Now let's go into a company where I managed to find a filing machine. And I'm going to demonstrate how we used to use it. Then we will go to the filing machine, put the die inside and just file around the edges. Being careful not to cross the line and go around the entire shape. After we did that, we will take the die and the punch, put it under the power press, bounce it a little bit, we'll roll over the edges, back again into the filing machine. And where we couldn't do it precisely, we would take the hand needle files and we would file the corners inside until we got the desired shape and clearance. We would look with a light. Then we would take the table and tilt it on an angle and put in the clearance. This is the way we used to make our punch and die. In the previous video, I demonstrated old-fashioned die making where we use a filing machine and hand files to make our dies. And then I left that shop and got a good raise and went into a precision die shop where we did everything by means of form grinding. And I could literally grind within one-tenth of a thousand. And to give you an example of what that is, I want to demonstrate over here on this blackboard. A human hair is approximately two and a half thousandths thick. In other words, you get a tenth of a thousand, you divide a human hair into 25 pieces. That gives you an idea how close I could grind on a surface grinder. Let's take a look at this floral pick die. This over here is a floral pick die and this is the die section and this is a new way that we're doing we'll get to that later on but we will make it into little sections so we can get in here with a surface grinder and grind these shapes into this part and this is the punch and between the punch and the die the clearance was between a half a thousand and one thousand and it had to be that close because this was stacked up i'll show you some parts later on and a half a thousand, give you an idea, if we go back again to this drawing, would be one-fifth the thickness of a human hair. These are some various sizes of the floral picks that we had. I made a number of these dies, and this is the metal strip that it came out. As you can see, there's on, on each side, we would stamp two at a time. And they used these here and went into an automatic machine and they would crimp the ears. They would take artificial flowers and put into styrofoam. And the problem was you couldn't have any burrs between the parts here because it wouldn't slide in the machine. That's why it had to be so precise. In making this part, this is this section out over here. It was taken out over here and enlarged it over here. And I blew it up over here. These are handwritten notes. This is no fancy diagram. This is shop notes that I made because I made a number of these dies. Grind flat with 16,000 radius. Move cross feed 1,000 at a time. Leave 3 tenths over for finished grinding. Then touch front and back off 2 tenths. Then grind flat. Use dresser 3 times. And there's a little radius in here. The angles over here and all these little tips. And remember, there could be no burrs on this part. You can't have a little, oh, oops, because it would be totally scrapped. You couldn't have anything that would create a burr on the part. And I spent days on a surface grinder, grinding the, the punch and the die sections so we would fit in. And it was done all by eye with a light on the bottom, no screen or something to look at, nothing to enlarge it. Everything was done simply by eye. But I did do it mathematically. I would put pins in here, 
and I used precision gauge blocks, and that's how I did a lot of my parts. I used my tenth indicator so I wouldn't have to be constantly looking through a magnifying glass to see where I was. I've explained old-fashioned die making from filing machines and hand files and precision form grinding where we spent days and days grinding on the machine, being very, very careful not to make one little mistake because one little notch in a punch or a die, it would be scrap. You had to start over. So it was very tedious work. Then came the great revolution that really altered dramatically tool and die making. And that's when wire EDM was introduced. Now by, with a simple hole into a part, we would thread the wire and we would cut within plus or minus one tenth of a thousand just by means of a computer and it would program this shape. Just take a look at this part which I'm going to demonstrate. This is a snowflake that we made, one of our display pieces. You can see the outline of the snowflake. Now I'm going to go over here and push it out. This is made out of two pieces of tool steel. Slide over again and notice how slow it goes down into this piece of tool steel. Now we can make it a press fit, but this is a slip fit. And just the escaping air now is allowing this to fall down into its place. And we'll go right down until it's, all the air is out. And I'll do it again to give you an idea. Push it out again. And it goes right down. That's how precise we can cut with wire EDM. Wire EDM has revolutionized tool and die making and also many other industries. We can cut up to 40 inches and even taller and up to 45 degrees taper, even in tungsten carbide. And there's a lot you can learn my son and I wrote this book. He's a mechanical engineer. The Complete EDM Handbook. It's also used in trade schools and colleges and has questions in the back. So if you want to learn more, go online and read this book. You'll get lots of information. I'd like to point out a chapter in this book, The Complete EDM Handbook, about why EDM one-piece stamping dies. This is a revolutionary method of producing these dies. Take, for example, this compound blank that you want to produce. This is a cavity inside, so you just want to produce this steel plate. The book gives you the instructions how to make the piece, and here you have the starter holes, that's where the wire goes in, and it gives you the instructions, and the Y-EDM will automatically put in the tapers, and then you could, once you put it in together, it would automatically line up Either you can put it this way with springs, or you can produce a die with positive knockout. Having worked for many years as a tool of die maker, way back with a filing machine and hand files and then precision form grinding, I really greatly appreciate the revolution that has taken place with wire EDM. And it's all free. You can learn a lot about it in our book that's on our website. Located in the heart of the high-tech energy capital of the world, Reliable has the largest EDM job shop capabilities in North America, specializing nationwide in wire, RAM, and small hole EDM. Our commitment to our customers and our passion for technology has made us the EDM specialists.